Hello, this is Vic Johnson. We're at the 2004 Jim Rohn Weekend event, and what a special honor for me and opportunity to spend a few moments with a hero of mine. Brian Tracy's been sharing with us this morning. We've got a few minutes now to, to get down and intimate with him. So, Brian, thanks for taking time out to visit with us. Thank you. Brian, you have been a student of success, I guess, for 40 years. Yes. And you've written that success is predictable. Right. And I know the way you analyze things that you've got to have a great explanation for us. What do you mean by success is predictable? And if I'm someone seeking that, what are some of the key things I need to be doing, looking out for, or whatever? Well, if you go into the kitchen to cook a dish, and the very first thing you get is a recipe, and you follow the recipe, and you work with the recipe, eventually you'll master that dish. Once you've mastered it and made it a few, it a few times, you can make the dish over and over again, and you'll remember the recipe. You don't have to keep going back to the recipe book. Now, if somebody says, boy, that's really delicious, you don't say, well, it's a miracle, like uh, something out of voodoo. No, you just followed a proven recipe that had been worked out by people before you. And that's basically the secret of success. If you want to be successful in starting a business, then you study what people have learned and everything that people have learned they've written down or shared in seminars or put onto audio programs is, I, I learned this from a very wise man named Kopp Koppmeyer who spent more than 50 years studying success. And he had developed more than 1,000 success principles that he had derived out of something like 6,000 books. And when I met him, I asked him the question you would ask. Of all these thousand principles, because I had studied it all, which is the most important principle of all? And he said, Brian, he said, it's simple. He said, use proven success methods. He said, learn from the experts. He said, Brian, you'll never live long enough to learn it all for yourself. So what I find is that successful people are those who learn from others who've gone before them. Unsuccessful people try to make it all up, like a cook going into the kitchen, taking ingredients out of the cupboards, throwing them all in a bowl, and wondering why it doesn't taste good. This is why people's sales careers, why 80% of salespeople are functioning well below their potential, only 20% make all the money. Why 20% of businesses in any industry make all the profits. Why 20% of the professionals in any uh, service uh, make 80% of the money and so on. It's because they follow proven success principles, proven recipes, proven formulas, proven combinations. And they just do them over and over again until they master them. Then they can do more and more of them, faster and faster, easier and easier, at a higher level of quality. And all that translates into greater results. Kind of following up on that, uh, obviously what it says to me, if I'm going to get the recipe for success, I'm going to have to find some people who already have mastered the recipe, so to speak. This morning, you talked about getting around the right people and how important that was, which sounds like kind of the same thing. I, fi I, get I find the recipe from the right people. Outside of seminars like this, yes. where are some places that if I'm looking for the right people, where can I find the right people? Where am I going to go find them at? Well, there, there, there's two or three parts of that. First of all, we are where we are and what we are because of the choices and decisions that we have made in the past. Uh, choices and decisions with regard to the jobs we take, the people we work with, the people we marry, live with, socialize with, the investments we've made, uh, the uses of our time, and so on. We are where we, and wh where we are and what we are because of our choices and decisions. So the starting point of changing our life is to make new choices and decisions, which requires that we stop making old choices and decisions that are not helping us. In other words, to get into something new, you've got to get out of something old. To start associating with positive people, you've got to stop associating with people who are not helping you. And you're, you, in, in many cases, people realize they're going to have to break off old friendships, break out of relationships, I've seen this happen countless of times. Quit jobs, um, stop associating with negative uh, family members who are constantly critical, is you're going to have to, to reorient yourself to more positive people. Now, the third principle that's so important is this, is that um, there's a law of attraction in the universe that says that you attract into your life people and circumstances in harmony with your own thinking. So if you start to read really good material, set goals, uh, commit to your own personal development, strive to become good at what you're doing, listen to positive audio programs, associate with positive people like at this seminar, what happens is you set up a force field of energy that is invisible, but it attracts into your life people, circumstances, 
possibilities, opportunities that would not have been there in the absence of your own changed thinking. So all three conspire. Stop making bad decisions, start making good decisions, start associating with people who are, encourage you, are in harmony with what you think, and then trust to this law of attraction to bring the right people into your life. Right. I know you've written about that and the power of thinking, the power of thought. I've begun to make those changes in my life. I, I'm, I'm uh, very serious about it. I'm very dedicated by it. But I'm surrounded by some unsupportive people that I'm not ready to end a relationship with. Maybe a spouse. Maybe it's because in the past I haven't followed through on some of the things and they think this is just another one of those things. What would you suggest I do? How would I handle, how do I keep that proper balance, for instance, in my thinking, being positive, and at the same time, I'm someone very close to me that can have a negative impact. What do I do until that person comes around? Well, there's the natural tendency when we hear or learn something great is we want to convince everybody else of it. All right, and you see this, people who quit smoking suddenly want there to be no smoking in the world. <laughs> people who adopt a religion or a political philosophy want everybody to join uh, the next day. But the uh, very best thing, as I mentioned earlier in our seminar, is that you must teach men at the school of example for they will learn it no other. So what you need to do is be an example and be an example for a, an extended period of time. Give yourself two, three months, maybe a year of being the new person. When you go on a diet, don't insist that everybody else go on a diet the next day. Actually go on the diet, stay on the diet, lose the weight, achieve the level of financial fitness, and attract people so they come to you and say, what is it that you're doing? Or what is it that you're reading? Or what is it that you have that makes you different? Only then, when they reach out, do you offer it to them. The flip side of this is that in the main, people don't change. You can change and you'll find it much easier to change if you're with positive people. Very hard to change with people who don't want you to change, who want you to be the person that you were. But in the main, people don't change. So sooner or later in life, you're often going to have to make some hard choices. Uh, in the short term, uh, be the person. As, as Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Be the kind of person that you want to see. And if that does not bring people around, then be prepared to go to the next step. Be prepared to walk away. Right. Something that interesting that you've taught on that I found remarkable was you said that if you write a goal down, yes. increase your chances of success by a thousand percent. Yes, by ten times. Overwhelming. Yes. Now, next to that, when it comes to goal setting, what's the most important thing I do? I've got it written down. Obviously, that's got power if it's going to increase my odds of success ten times. What's the next thing, the next biggest thing in that process? Well, there's a process which has made more people rich than any other single process of goal achieving. And it's to take your major goal and structure it as a question. If your goal is to earn $100,000 a year, then you write, how can I earn $100,000 in the next 12 months? Now, that's an open-ended question, not how can I earn it at my job or doing a specific thing, just an open-ended question. How can I earn the amount of money? And then you discipline yourself to write 20 answers to the question. And the 20 answers are all the different things that you could think of to earn $100,000. Work longer, uh, work harder, uh, upgrade my skills, get a new job, take a part-time opportunity. Uh, whatever it happens to be, write down everything you could think of, but force yourself to write at least 20 questions or 20 answers to the question. The 20 question method called mindstorming forces you to dig deep, deep into your mind where you will find all your answers. And it may be call a person, uh, read a book. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, we had a young fellow, entrepreneur, he got 35 years old. He'd built a successful business. He'd worked about 10 years to do it. And he, for two years, wanted to sell his business so he could take a year off and travel, enjoy his money. And so for two years, he just sort of floundered around like a fish on the dock, wanting to sell his business. Nobody uh, offered to buy it. He suggested it to people. Uh, people were not interested and so on. And in this exercise that they put him through, his 20th answer, and often it's the 20th answer that is the breakthrough, was buy a book on how to sell your own business. And it just went off like a flashbulb in his mind. At the break, he got up. It was a downtown hotel. Got up, went down to the street to a major bookstore, went and found he was amazed at the number of books that had been written on how to buy and sell a business. So he bought two or three books. Two months later, he had restructured, 
packaged this business, sold it completely, satisfactorily, and took a year off. He said, but it was just a single idea. It was a breakthrough idea. But it was so simple. Just get a book on the subject. <laughs> and you think, boy, that's pretty obvious, yes. But it's the most obvious answers that we overlook. I know that uh, you've built a lot of companies. I know you've coached a lot of people who've built great companies. You've been an inspiration and, and mentor to a lot of people. I'm a person who I've gone through maybe perhaps your goals exercise, which you have a very thorough goals exercise. I've put my goals down. I've got all the objectives and the task lined out, and I just can't seem to get started. And 90 days pass by, and I still haven't gotten started. Now I'm at the point where I'm starting to beat myself up and all. What's the key after I've got the, the mechanics, so to speak, in place? What, what's the, what can I look for, where, and where can I look for it to get started? This, this is one of the biggest of all challenges. It's procrastinating on starting on a major goal. And the way that you overcome it, one of many ways, is you break the goal down into as many small steps as you possibly can. You make a list of every single step that you're going to have to take to achieve the goal. From the first one of clearing your desk, or reading a chapter in a book, or making a phone call, or uh, working out a financial plan. Plan. So what you do is you break it down into small enough steps. Henry Ford said the biggest tasks in the world can be accomplished if broken down into enough small steps. And once you've broken it down into enough small steps, just do one step. Say so now of all of these steps, there are five minute, ten minute steps, of all of these steps, what would be a good place to start? And then you do just one thing. And maybe the next day you do just one more thing. And what happens within the mind is there's a natural momentum that once you get into the rhythm, you start to move forward. And pretty soon you're doing the next step and the next step and the next step and so on. I uh, had a, a good friend who had for years wanted to write a business book. And uh, he was working from 7 or 8 in the morning till 9 or 10 o'clock at night. He had a, never had the energy to write it. So he finally said, I'm going to write this book, so I'm going to write it one page at a time. So he rescheduled his life, so he came home earlier, went to bed by 9 o'clock, got up at 5 o'clock, and wrote one page. That's all. By the end of the year, he had a 350-page book. And he published the book, and it became a great success. But it was just writing one page a day that enabled him to write a bestseller. How you all doing out there? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored and I'm blown away, even though this is my 25th year plus doing this. I've been doing this for a quarter of a century now, which is quite amazing for me in the process. Thank you. And I've had the privilege now of working with more than 3 million people live in events from more than 80 countries around the world. So at this stage, I gotta tell you something. I could be an idiot and I would know that there are certain patterns that cause people to be fulfilled, to be happy, to fit, to be strong, to feel alive, to be vibrant, to have passion in their life, to do well financially, but even more importantly, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, in their health and their relationships. And there are also patterns that make people frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed, sad, lonely, cause them to be struggling financially, struggling with their body, struggling intimately, and those patterns they're not because there's something wrong with somebody, it's because of a pattern that we're doing. And I've spent a quarter of a century of my life basically studying the most successful people in the world and the most challenged, and figuring out what's the fastest way to create a change in basically developing the one thing that all people have in common who succeed, their leaders. This is a leadership program. Because I don't care what, what style you are, I don't care if you're a mom, if you're a great mom, you lead your child, you're not led by your child, or a great dad. If you're a great business person, you're a great salesperson, you're a great negotiator, you're a great anything, you're a great human being. This has been my entire life's obsession. What makes the difference in people's lives? And that leadership component, as I say, doesn't always mean somebody follows you. A leader is somebody who lives life on their terms, that you will never settle for less than you can be or share or give or create. It's not what we get that makes us happy, it's who we become. How we live our life, who we are as a person. People can take away all the things, but who you become, no one can take away. And the problem is most of us are trying to be something we're not. And it isn't so much about change, about changing yourself. The change happens when you be yourself. Know thyself, that's the hard part for most people, and then be thyself. Because most of us in our lives, out of our desire for respect or achievement or love or connection or something, 
we've been trying to be the way we think we'd have to be in order to get that love, respect, appreciation, whatever it is we've been after at some unconscious level. And we've been doing it so long that we think that this is who we are. Because success without fulfillment is failure. And I can't tell you how many people I work with who are supposedly the best in the world at what they do and they have more money than they can spend and they have all these people that love and respect them and yet they're unhappy inside. Because if you wanna know what's really you, where you're gonna be alive is when it's really you. And you may even think you know who you are because you've been living a certain way, but I'll tell you how you'll know. You'll feel euphoric, you'll feel strong, you'll feel unlimited, you'll feel free. I have seen, and of three million people around this earth in 80 countries, I've seen just about anything you can see and there are only so many patterns. And what you're gonna find underneath all of this behavior is we have the same needs. There are six human needs we're gonna to review tonight. When you understand what those needs are and which ones you're focusing on, you start to understand why people do the crazy things they do, including you and I. And you begin to understand, hey, there might be a better way to meet my needs and I don't have to get caught up in this game of stress and frustration and upset, or I could really help this person I care about because I could see what's really going on. Part of what we want to accomplish here as leaders is we want to become practical psychologists. We want to understand what's really going on so we can help, so we can make a difference, so we can transform. So yes, of course you can do better in your business because the more you understand about what people need and want, the greater you're going to be. The better manager, better leader, the better mom or dad, the better friend. And there's a better you that's available when you understand what's driving you. But most of us are running patterns over and over again. And we want to free that up. To free it up, we got to break the pattern. We got to do things that are different. So we're gonna do something different. I'm not here because I believe in positive thinking. If you think that's what I believe, you don't know much about me. I'm not one of those people that believes you're supposed to go to your garden and chant, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. <laughs> there's weeds right there. All right, that's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I believe that if you really wanna be effective, you gotta tell the truth. In fact, there's three mandates of leadership, if you wanna jot them down, that, are, that may be the foundation of everything that I believe and I hope that you will see as something that's useful for your own life to remember, because it's so fundamental. So the first mandate to leadership is not just to be positive. First mandate of leadership is see it as it is, but not worse than it is. The first secret to be an effective leader in your life, whether it's you want to lead your body from the location it is right now you're unhappy about, you don't have the energy you want, your body's not where it wants, to where you want to be, that's leadership. You want to transform your business, that's leadership. Your income, that's leadership. You want to help your children, that's leadership. You're going to be a leader, step number one, tell the truth. See as it really is, but don't make it worse than it is so you have an excuse not to try. What takes guts is to put yourself on the line. What takes guts is to say, I'm going to make this work. What takes guts is to say, I'm going to believe knowing I could be disappointed or devastated. But you know what? Disappointment's a good emotion if you learn how to use it. Anybody can see it as it is and maybe be honest, but here's the real secret. Can you come up with a vision? Step two is see it better than it is. That's part of what we're gonna do this weekend. Seeing it as it is, you gotta be honest. And there's not anybody in this room, including me, doesn't have areas of their life that can be made better. But if we can figure out what they are and tell ourselves the truth, regardless of what other people think, then we got a chance to make a change. I learned something from General Schwarzkopf, one of the best leaders I've ever met. And I got a chance to spend quite a bit of time with him over the years. And he said to me, Tony, I'll tell you the secret to leadership. He said, the whole secret to your life for any group, any individual, is no individual, no organization can get better till they can admit something's wrong. And so you know what the problem is? No one wants things to be wrong, so we compare ourselves to others who are doing better than so we can feel really good. See, he raised the standard. He went to step two. Step two is you gotta see it better than it is and set that as your standard. A standard is something you don't go for. It's not a goal. It's something you live, breathe, and find a way to get to no matter what. If there isn't a way, a leader makes the way. <laughs> is there a difference between should and must for you, yes or no? Yeah. You better believe there is. So when, it gets the, when that standard is a must for you, you're gonna find the way. Finally, the third key here is once you see it better than it is, make it that way. You gotta take massive action. You gotta be resourceful. You gotta find the way to make it you want it. So this weekend, first thing we're gonna do after a while is you're gonna get real clear about how is it really? How is your relationship really? How is your body really? How is your career really? How are your finances really? All of us in this room, as different as we are, and you can look around, you see every gender, race, probably religion, belief structure in this room, the one thing I bet we have in common is we won't settle. How many came because you want more? How many came because you want more? Say I. Oh, say I. So whatever that more is that you came for, 
more energy, more focus, more determination, more confidence, more certainty, more love, more success, more playfulness, more of your body being where it is, more of your spirit alive, whatever it is. I can tell you this, whatever you think you came for, that's not why you came. Because <laughs> I've done this for 25 years. I'm not saying you won't get that too. But what brought you here and what you're gonna leave with is gonna be more than what you thought, I can promise you. You wanna know what makes us happy? Progress. That's it. I don't care what you've achieved, if you don't feel like you're still growing, if you don't feel like you're still contributing, if you don't feel like there's some progress in your body or your mind or your relationship or your business, if you don't feel like there's progress, you're gonna be unhappy. I don't care how big your life is compared to other people. Progress is the game, my friends. It's being alive. And if we're gonna be alive, absolutely. Whatever your game plan is, it's ultimately to get to a certain feeling. And the truth is you can have it right now. This next few days is the beginning of that path, and we want to take it to a whole nother level. And let's start now.